Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. All right, guys, today we're going to talk about an approach to the CT neck. So the neck is a very complicated space. Um, there's so many different small areas to look and so much complex anatomy to cover. So it's really important to have an organized approach. Um, so like usual, we're going to have a sense of what's going on with the patient, the history, and the reason the study is being done. You're going to look at any priors and get a sense as to what's leading up to the current exam. You'll evaluate any limitations of the study and then obviously take a look at localizer images. And then basically how I approach the neck is to section off the actual neck into three, you know, three major compartments. The external areas of the neck, which can um, comprise the lymph node stations, the kind of inner air digester tract and mucosal spaces, which is like the inner part of the tubing, and then everything in between, which includes the deep spaces, the endocrine and exocrine glands in the neck, the large vessels. And then finally, at the end, we'll take a look at incidentally imaged structures, including the lower aspect of the brain, calvarium, other parts of the head and face, spinal canal, and then the upper chest. Finally, we'll take a look at the bones. All right, so here um, is our approach to the CT soft tissue neck. So first thing I like to do once I've gotten a sense of what's going on with the patient is take a quick look at the local iris or images, partic particularly the lower aspects and the upper aspects where we may not actually see uh, the same anatomy on the um, the cross-sectional images. Once you've taken at least a quick look at the localizer images, I bring up the uh, the study in an NPR viewer, and the planes have been corrected for the patient's anatomy. And usually what I like to do first is start with that outside uh, look at the potential lymph node distribution, looking for ad abnormal adenopathy or mass lesions in the neck, confluent inflammatory change, any sort of soft tissue abnormality, uh, inclusive also of collections um, or really really kind of anything uh, disrupting normal plant veins and muscular tissue planes. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to look peripherally here, all right, and just basically following um, the nodal stations of 2, 3, 4, anteriorly around 1, 6, 6 and 7, and then more posteriorly as well, posterior neck basically around the anatomy of the neck, following those soft tissue planes and watching those lymph nodes pop in and out in those fat planes between the musculature. And I'm looking for any sort of abnormal, um, abnormally enlarged uh, lymph nodes, any sort of mass lesions. Um, like for example, we have a you know pretty enlarged lymph node right there. And you'll just keep going around the neck looking there. You'll have to note that you also, we're also gonna see some areas, you know, um, around the ear at the superior aspect of the study you're going to see the supraclavicular fossa very important to look there and at the inferior aspects you'll see the the axilla so be, be sure to check not just the uh, cervical no, uh, nodal stations but the incidentally imaged portions more uh, superiorly and inferiorly okay and i like to do that on the coronals because they lay out the nodal stations well and then kind of do a, a quick look on the um, sagittal, so you see how well those lay out the nodal stations along the cervical chain, and you can kind of see even areas uh, near the occiput, you know, posterior, like these uh, these areas more superiorly, and then you know uh, in the upper aspects of the chest, supraclavicular fossa, and then out into the axilla. Okay, so you want to take a look at that more peripherally. I'll do that on two planes, and I'll use the axials to troubleshoot if I need. But I particularly like the other two um, reconstructions. Once I've taken a look um, at the periphery of the study, well, then I'll do is I'll evaluate the aerodigestive tract. So it's very easy to forget um, to look in the nasal cav uh, the nasal cavity, nasal passage um, through the nares, uh, you know, in the region of the turbinates, all the way out to the uh, co um, uh, coena bilaterally, right? And I'm also taking at least a quick look at the paranasal sinuses as they do that, and then ultimately same with the oral cavity. All right, taking a look at the tongue, midline septum of the tongue, areas around the base of tongue, preservation of these fat planes, looking for ad any abnormal mass lesions, disruption of the normal um, uh, arch architecture of the tongue, looking for you know um, any you know, disruption of these normal kind of striated appearance of that musculature. All right, so to having taken a look at the nasal and oral cavities, we're going to go back into the superior aspects of the 
uh, nasopharynx, looking at the torus tuberis, the um, fo fossa of Rosenmuller, the various kind of crevices up here in the post um, posterior superior aspect of the nasopharynx, looking for symmetry. Uh, we're going to see if there's any mass lesions or other mucosal abnormalities. And slowly coming down, we're going to kind of catch the uvula, and then ultimately down into the um, epiglottis, the piriform sinuses, and again, we're kind of looking just around circumferentially for a mucosal lesion. And then as we come down further and further, we're in the uh, hypopharynx, and you see the piriform sinuses here. This, this person has them a little bit asymmetric, a face on the left. But we're going to come down ultimately into the area of the um, false and then true vocal cords, um, and we're going to again look for mass lesions. We're going to look for any disruption in the normal architecture of the pharynx and then in, finally you know in this region we're going to see the beginning of the esophagus posteriorly and then the trachea and then we'll follow those down one by one so i like to follow down the trachea into the aspects of the airways that are imaged at the inferior aspect of the study as well as the esophagus again mostly looking for mass lesions mucosal abnormalities all right, so that covers the air digestive tract, and then I also like to take a look at the various other deep structures or deep spaces of the neck. Um, they are, you know, the this the the various uh, deep spaces. I won't go through and necessarily name them all. Um, and there's so much complex anatomy. If you start at the top, you know, um, and this is kind of more talking about the fat planes. But if you look, you can even see the uh, the PPF, so the pterygoid palatine fossae up here. And then as you come down, we're going to get into the, you know, uh, you, again, we're essentially the pharyngeal mucosal space. You have the parapharyngeal fat. You've got the carotid space here, um, uh, the parotid space. And then you just want to kind of look at the paramedian or just the uh, follow the carotid sheaths down, their parotid, uh, carotid spaces down. Just make sure there's no abnormal, you know, mass lesions, soft tissue uh, stranding. Infil infiltrative abnormality or any other sort of um, kind of soft tissue lesion affecting those various deep spaces. All right. So we've kind of looked more peripherally. We've looked centrally. We've looked in the deep spaces that kind of constitute kind of the uh, middle part of the neck. And then now what we're going to do is specifically look at various structures in the neck. First, the, the quote unquote glands, both endocrine and exocrine, and then the large vessels. So I actually like to look at um, uh, the, f so first the parotid glands on the coronals, right? And then I, and then I will look at the submandibular glands here. And then finally the thyroid, all right? And I'll, I'll take a look at at least one other plane. I'm just I'm looking for abnormal stranding, mostly mass lesions, you know, atrophy, any sort of soft tissue abnormality, and then again the uh, thyroid. Um Finally, we're going to take a look at the large vessels of the neck. You can see that there's actually quite a bit of the thoracic vasculature that we're imaging here. What I typically start do is I start with the systemic vasculature um, and follow the aorta uh, or the systemic arterial vascular and follow the aorta and then ultimately the subclavians out to the sides, the common carotids up, and then almost just like a CTA head and neck all the way up to the skull base. Um, the internal carotid arteries, and then the same with the vertebral arteries. So then finding the um, vertebral as it arises off of the subclavia and then up into the transverse foramina and all the way around as best as I can up into the, uh, the dura. I'll do that bilaterally. And then also take a look at the major venous structures as they uh, course through the neck, mostly the large internal jugular veins as, as they provide venous return and then the subclavian veins as they uh, provide return to the central venous vasculature. I'll usually do this on one or two planes. And then if there's any sort of abnormality, I'll, I'll double check on the axials. And especially if you're finding a, a previous mass lesion or inflammatory process, you know, checking to see if there's neurovascular involvement is going to be one of those important Per, uh, most important pertinent positives or negatives that you're going to go through. All right. So you, I do also want to note that, that because we're seeing a significant portion of the upper chest, you're also going to see the pulmonary arterial vasculature. And depending on contrast bolus timing and patient risk factors, you may sometimes incidentally see like a PE. It's always good to take uh, good practice to take a look at the um, 
chest vasculature anytime it's imaged and when there's contrast. All right, so we've covered um, the major vasculature. And at this point, we've basically looked at all the soft tissue structures within the neck. Um, the lymph node stations, the mucosal space, mucosal and deep spaces, the glands and the vessels. Um, now we have to make sure that we at least check the incidentally image more peripheral structures, right? So at the top of the study, you're going to notice here we see a bit of the orbits, you know, your, the paranasal sinuses, the master air cells, the whole ear apparatus. You see portions of the brain, the posterior fossa. You see the skull base, okay? I typically like to take at least a quick look at that. There's all these kind of facial soft, you know, um, parts, parts of the face here that you're seeing. Um, we'll ultimately come back to that in the osseous structures, but then I like to make a good practice of just at least taking a quick look at the spinal canal and following that down. Um, and then that kind of leads me to kind of begin another search in the incidentally imaged upper chest. And we shouldn't forget, even though we followed the airway down, that we do see significant portions of the mediastinum. So take a look for mass lesions that not be there, sometimes the hyla, and then the lungs, where you're definitely going to want to take a look and make sure there's no suspicious pulmonary nodules or any other uh, airspace sort of uh, abnormalities. And I have to, even though we already had mentioned it, I do have to, I do have to remind you that we're going to see the axilla uh, in many of these patients, depending on the field of view. So making sure to take a look there. Uh, again, the periphery of the image, the field of view is going to be where a lot, it's going to be very easy to miss abnormality. Um, and then finally, having taken a look at basically the top, the bottom, you know, every part of the study, we're going to have to make sure that we take a quick look, at least at the osseous structures. And remember to look at the skull base, the incidental image calvarium. You know, you're going to see the whole of the alveolar ridges, maxilla uh, and mandible, all the teeth frequently. Um, you'll see dental disease, periodontal disease, and that may impact some of the findings you're making in the soft tissue regions of the neck um, and face. We're going to take a look at alignment, the vertebral bodies uh, in, the, in the cervical spine, upper thoracic spine, and kind of like any other, um, you'll just take a quick look at the other portions, uh, the facets, posterior elements, and making sure that you see the image thoracic cage. Sometimes you'll see portions of the upper extremities looking for aggressive osseous lesions, looking for fractures or any other sort of incidentals, though uh, kind of pickup of acute abnormality is going to be generally uh, pretty uncommon. All right. So that basically covers everything. As you can see that when we image the neck, you see so much the so many different complex anatomic regions, and you see a lot of complicated um, regions at, at the top and bottom of the study. So it's very important to make sure you go through all those one by one to see what's going on. Um, I should say as a caveat that if you're doing any sort of cancer staging, it's really important to have sense of you know, the current staging guidelines, and those can be useful to be to have open up because this is just this is just to take you through the anatomy to find something um, in the first place. So, as a recap, to approach the CT neck, what I like to do is get a good sense of what's happening to the patient, have a sense of if there's any issues with the study, and then take a look at those localizers, and then ultimately use this approach where I look peripherally for for masses, for adenopathy, look down the air digester tract, down all the way to the trachea and esophagus, okay, starting starting even from the nasal and oral uh, cavities. All right, then we're going to take a look at the deep spaces of the neck. We're looking at the glands, you know, parotid, submandibular, um, and then the, you know, um, uh, thyroid gland. And then the large, both arterial and venous structures in the neck, as well as imaged incidentally at the top and bottom of the study, we're going to take a look at that lower head, we're going to look at the spinal canal. We're going to look at the upper chest, mediastinum, as well as airways. And then we're ultimately going to look at the osseous structures. And that should cover um, this very complicated or the very complicated space of the neck and make sure that you're not letting anything go uh, in your evaluation.